I'd just like to thank all of you for coming today. Uh, I'm Dr. Richardson, like she was saying, and I, I just, I like teaching people that healthy eating is not difficult. A lot of times people go, oh, I gotta eat healthy. They think all of a sudden they gotta spend all this money on organic food and things like that. But actually there's even a list of vegetables that don't have to be organic. I have that on my website also. So I have a lot of stuff on my website. My uh, www.doxievich.com is my website. And I also have a YouTube channel uh, Doc Seavich 3 TV where I have videos on there and I will be posting this video so I prepared this I did this talk uh, before menu review with Doc Seavich and what I do is I try to tell people there's three things you have to do you have to have the right tools so you have to have the right equipment in your kitchen you have to have the right foods and then you have to have the right plan so if you know say for example you know you have a late meeting and you'll need to have dinner, you can have something already in the refrigerator that you just have to then come home and just pop in the microwave and serve dinner within like 15, 20 minutes. So um, when it comes to having the right tools, that's like a sharp knife because you're less likely to cut yourself if your knife is nice and sharp. You wanna have a cutting uh, board. I have one here, I listed basically the basic things that you need the, the bare minimum, a large spoon, like a slotted spoon and a solid spoon. And then you wanna have a set of mixing bowls. That way you can, if you're preparing salad or whatever you're making, you have a bowl that's big enough to mix all your ingredients together and then you put them in a smaller container. Uh, a box grater, anybody know, have a, knows what that is, a box grater? Mm -hmm. Box graters are real handy because you can grate or slice on them and if you don't have a food processor, that's another oh, way to like, mini yeah, the little, yeah, they, they look like a, it's like a little square. <laughs> yeah, basically like a little cowbell, yeah. And you can actually grate your vegetables. They have three different sizes for grating and then one side for slice. So it's really good to me, whenever you cut your vegetables or fruit in small pieces, mm -hmm. that releases the flavor and the juices. And say you make a fruit salad, instead of having the big chunks, cut them in smaller pieces and then the juices from all the different fruits kind of mix together and it like makes its own little natural dressing. So and then you could just put some dry seasoning on there and then that way you won't add additional calories. Um, the other thing um, that I have on here is airtight containers. And I like rectangle size because rectangle shaped containers don't take us up as much room in the refrigerator as a round bowl and plus you can stack them on top and like you can have your your one entree in one and a, another entree in the second one like that so it's helpful when you have the airtight containers and then of course you need a, a small can opener and you need a stock pot and a little skillet so you can stir fry your vegetables now for the mid-level I put you know you can then have all those things that are basic plus add a vegetable peeler and either a blender or like a mandolin that's that, that's where you can do different size uh, thin slices or like that spiralizer that'll turn like zucchini into like pasta I tell you if you use zucchini or the yellow crooked neck squash and it's if you grate it if you pour pasta sauce over it, when you're eating it, it tastes just like pasta. Wow. But really, you're sneaking like vegetables in. Mm -hmm. The other thing is our cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Cauliflower is very, has a mild flavor and it's white. So you can hide that in a lot of things. You know, you can have a soup. If you have a regular soup, mm -hmm. you can actually put uh, uh, rice cauliflower in there to like thicken the soup. And now the soup is more hearty, almost like a full meal. You can get full. Instead of having a watery broth, you can actually thicken it with the rice cauliflower. So like, and uh, somebody mentioned quinoa. Mm -hmm. Quinoa is really good. Quinoa is actually a seed, but when it gets wet, it fluffs up. Mm -hmm. So people use it like it's like, like a, like in place of like rice or something like that. So that's really good. And then optimal to have a good quality food processor. I don't know if you have a food processor, that makes it so easy. Uh, eat quick salad that I like to make is cucumber salad. Like instead of having to wash lettuce leaves and cut them up and everything like that, you can take a cucumber, cut it the long way, take a teaspoon and rake all the seeds out. 
and then run it through the food processor. And you're talking about now you have shredded, grated cucumber, then you just put your tomatoes and your other salad uh, ingredients in there and you can have a really quick salad and plus fresh cucumber it's, it just tastes and make your kitchen smell good too so that's really good <laughs> um, so and then you want to have things like uh, stainless steel bowls I have I have some airtight stainless steel bowls and I found that the vegetables tend to stay fresh longer mm -hmm. in the stainless steel bowls so I and now I've like I've they've, I've seen uh, uh, sets of stainless steel bowls like I saw some at at Sam's and I also saw some at Home Depot of all places I think they got it in for Christmas but you can find stainless steel bowls that have airtight uh, lids, the plastic lids, mm -hmm. and that's really good for keeping your vegetables fresh. I found that they, they stay fresher longer in the stainless steel bowls. Another neat gadget is the immersion blender. I don't know if you've ever seen those. People call it like the boat motor. It's like a little blender on a stand. So you put it in there and you can like see like you have your soup you can actually blend puree right in the in the pan so you can thicken your soup just by using the little immersion blender mm -hmm. so that's another handy thing like say like you have chunks of tomato in there but if you put the immersion blender in there that'll like turn it into like tomato sauce mm -hmm. so that'll thicken the soup without putting like flour or additional carbs or something like that in there so when we're getting the right foods the best diet is composed of 20 to 30 percent lean meat or some kind of protein mm -hmm. and then you want to have 70 to 80 percent vegetables mm -hmm. so th of course you just and that just leaves a little bit for carbs what people don't realize is that when you eat carbs mm -hmm. that makes you feel more hungry and that's why you want to eat more and more and more Th the food industry puts sugar in like things that you don't even think it's in but they do that because sugar or carbs makes you want to eat more when you eat vegetables like how you ladies are doing here the vegetables make you feel full and you feel satisfied and then you don't want to keep eating so it's good that's that's the problem they've actually tracked that there's a connection with the brain in terms of wanting to eat more carbs when you're eating the sugar you eat more and more so the thing the goal is to pick two meals a week where you just eat whatever you want but then for the rest of the week the rest of the meals that you have throughout the week you want to stick to what's called the best diet that's like the 70 to 80 percent uh, veggies and the uh, lean meats and protein 20 to 30 percent so um, then I have on here right plan so if you're dining in or eating at home of course you can pr prepare your meals ahead of time dining on the go say like you have to run errands what you can do is pack a lunch to take with you in the car that way when you get hungry you have your healthy food right there you don't have to go and make an unhealthy choice and um, the other thing is say that you're uh, you might be uh, eating out at a restaurant you can ask them to put the salad dressing on the side that way you can control how much salad dressing that you put in it or well, one, one time I was at the restaurant and they had a salad and you had an option of adding other meats to it so I was like oh well can I just add some of this chicken to it and they were like oh sure so sometimes even if it's not on the menu sometimes you can kind of make a little combination of things that like you can kind of create your own meal and most restaurants they're they're aware that people are trying to be more health conscious so they're not they're not they're not um, they don't object to doing things like that so you, you, you just have to ask uh, the other thing if you have a dinner meeting just look over the menu a lot of times they'll have something like heart healthy or they have little a little heart beside the thing that are low calorie low fat so that way that can kind of guide you into making a more healthy choice so um, I see that you all are bringing your lunch and that that's the that the thing when you bring your own food you control the fat you control the sugar you control the salt so that's the good thing about packing your own food so did anybody have any questions or comments yes so when you said um compose 20 to 30 percent lean meat mm -hmm. what's the portion okay for for um the, 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 the guide is that if you look at your hand and you draw a circle without your fingers and thumb that's about your meat portion for the whole day 
And you can even do that for children. And I use that, that demonstration for children so that people will see, you know, if your little two-year-old is eating 20 chicken nuggets, you know, if you look in their hand, you know, that can't fit in there. So, I mean, that kind of help gives people a, a kind of a, a rule of thumb. The other thing is, in terms of drinking enough water, the rule is for children for every year of age, they should have eight ounces of water. So a one-year-old should have eight, a two-year-old should have 16, a three-year-old should have 24, but then it max out, maxes out at eight years old. So you should have, um, you should have eight, um, eight times eight, which is 64 ounces. Mm -hmm. And 64 ounces is kind of the rule for everybody. So you can have anywhere from 64 to 72 ounces of water a day. So they said most of the time when adults think they're hungry, they're actually thirsty. Mm -hmm. So if you actually drink some water, that can kind of uh, calm down that the urge that you want to go and snack or get something like that, mm -hmm. that you're probably actually thirsty instead of hungry. So, um, but yeah, the, um, and then the vegetables, you want to always use like green leafy vegetables. Um, the vegetables like corn and your root vegetables are like higher in sugar. If you're trying to get lower sugar, you want to, what they call low glycemic, you want to stay with like green leafy vegetables like your cabbage, your cauliflower, broccoli, kale, asparagus, things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a really good recipe for um, a cauliflower pizza crust that's completely cauliflower. See, some, some of the recipes, they also have flour in them, but I found a recipe that's completely cauliflower. It's just like cauliflower and cheese. It's really good, and it tastes really good. I did a cooking demonstration for some people, and they were amazed that it tastes that good. But so it does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, um, even though we're kind of just focusing on like the the busy mom, mm -hmm. young professional life. Mm -hmm. So I was actually talking to my mom mm -hmm. about making some diet alterations uh -huh. because she's having some health issues okay. that are, they're unexplained, mm. but I'm like 85% sure it's just because of her poor diet. Mm -hmm. like she eats fast food and mm -hmm. she eats like traditional cultural mm -hmm. things like everything in bacon grease right and right and so it's like when i talk to her about not eating that way mm -hmm. it's like i can even though we're on the phone like i feel her brain is just going she's like, closing the, no no the thing what the good thing what i always tell people is like i always point out two days a week eat what you can eat what two meals a week you can eat whatever you want mm -hmm. that way you don't feel deprived mm -hmm. and then the other thing is that they can still eat what I do is I do what's called an upgrade I find out what people are eating like a 24-hour diet recall well, what did you eat for breakfast what did you have for lunch what did you have for dinner and then based on what they tell me I then say well you know what you had pizza instead of having three slices of pizza why don't you have one slice of pizza and then have a side salad then you can take a bite of salad a bite of pizza so now they don't hear pizza's not allowed mm -hmm. now they're hearing oh, okay just eat a little less pizza mm -hmm. and so what happens is when people a lot of times it's not that people don't like vegetables they don't like the way their vegetables have been served mm -hmm. a lot of times vegetables have been cooked until there's like no flavor no texture mm -hmm. no nothing but if you leave them so that they're still a little crunch and they're still nice and crispy, they do have their own uh, flavor that and put a dry seasoning or something on there. It really and I find that if you cut up vegetables and fruits in small pieces, that's when it really to me it tastes better because the juices leak out. Even the vegetables, the juices leak out and like mix together, so you have like your own salad dressing, like our own dressing but there's no fat because it's just the juices from the vegetables. Mm -hmm. so, so when you're telling your mom, you say, you know what, instead of saying you shouldn't eat that, I say, you know something, when you're eating that, why don't you add this? Why don't you put it with this? Say that she's eating, even if you're eating ribs, you can have ribs and then a salad. So then instead of eating six ribs, you eat two ribs and then you have the salad. So by eating the salad, then you get full, but you still ate the ribs. So you still feel good that, you know, you still had the ribs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like, 
Yeah, or like yeah. like even hamburgers or like say you do um, meatballs. Mm -hmm. Instead of spaghetti, that's a good time to use the grated zucchini. Mm -hmm. So you can grate the zucchini mm -hmm. and don't even cook it. Just leave it raw and pour the hot pasta on there and the cut up meatballs or the meat sauce. Mm -hmm. And when you're eating it in your mouth, it tastes just like pasta. You can't tell that it's not pasta. And uh, you can put, you can even put zucchini in soups also. You can add that to a grated zucchini to a soup to, to, cause I'm all about hearty soups. If you have a hearty soup, that can be a filling meal yeah. for lunch. I have these little glass containers that have lids on them. They hold like two cups. And so like this week I needed four days for lunch. So I just put, I made the soup and then I divided it in these glass lids and put the top, the glass bowls and put the tops on them and stored them in the refrigerator. Each morning when I needed my lunch, I just grab one, make a sandwich, put it in the lunch container, done. Yeah, so it's that, that, that way it's faster that way when you do it. Have it cooked ahead of time and then say like you have it all ready, you come home for dinner. Like I leave my vegetables, when I chop them up, I don't cook them until it's time to heat them to eat them. So I have raw vegetables cut in my stainless steel bowl and then I just put that in the, on the plate and put some meat or whatever. I don't even cook my, I cook the salmon originally but then I don't reheat it. I just flake it and after I heat the vegetables I flake it and put it. And you know a lot of times what I use for instead of salad dressing, I buy coleslaw. Coleslaw that's kind of chopped up and I stir that into the vegetables and so the flavor gets all in the vegetables So it's a it's less coleslaw, but it gets all in all the vegetables And then I have a dry seasoning mix that I like body it has that complete seasoning mix It's dry if you sprinkle that on your vegetables and then microwave them the steam it kind of steams them and it tastes really good so I just do things like that because, you know, when I get home, it's like I'm not trying to pull out a lot of pots and start cooking and everything, but you just spoon the vegetables on your plate and, and, and you have your meat already cooked. You can rotisserie chicken. That's a good thing because some one lady said, oh, rotisserie chickens are salty. I said, no. And this one lady said, no, get them from ATB. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's why I never thought they were salty because that's where I get mine from. Uh -huh. So <laughs> a, a rotisserie chicken is good because you can have some for a dinner and then in the, the next day you can slice it and have some chicken sandwiches for lunch or you can make a chicken salad you can make a little chicken soup just whatever but it's already cooked so you just get it and mm -hmm. and and the other thing i tell people is the salad kits that they have in the store if it's like kale in it or broccoli in it uh, or you know like the broccoli slaw mix mm -hmm. you can actually instead of eating those cold you can actually heat those so it's like you have chopped vegetables all ready to go and you can just put those on your plate and heat those so if you're not feeling a cold salad you can actually have a warm side dish by heating the, the little salad kits yeah and and or you can get the, the kale salad kit and then get a bag of the organic kale and then mix all that together and now you have a larger portion that you can now have for four people or whatever so you can do that I do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How long would you recommend? Because I, you know, you said that it's all about cooking the vegetables correctly. Mm -hmm. How long would we think? Because sometimes I do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, overcook it, and mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I just kind of like just more like eyeball it. You know, right? So, because I, I either steam it or I'll, I'll roast it. Mostly, I, most of the majority of the time, I roast them. Mm -hmm. So, how long do you recommend? Well, what the key is, just watch the color of the vegetables. Okay. You want the color to still be bright and vibrant. Mm -hmm. If the color is still bright and vibrant mm -hmm. then the flavor is still there okay. once it's all limp and dull looking that's when it's not gonna taste good okay. but like and uh, like when you go to um, it's funny when I go down the steam line at like Luby's or something you're like peeping and oh give me the, the bright you know, you know sometimes <laughs> I don't want the olive green broccoli I want the bright <laughs> color one you know so you want you want okay. your if your vegetables have a nice because you'll sometimes I notice that you put them in them I put mine in the microwave and then I'll microwave for about a, like a minute, 45 seconds, mm -hmm. up to like about two and a half mm -hmm. minutes. And when you take it back out, you'll see that the vegetables actually look a little brighter in color. Mm -hmm. 
and then that's good and then they're ready to go they're nice and hot yeah but yeah brussels sprouts are good uh, roasted brussels sprouts are really good i can remember the the, wor the, the worst is when you boil brussels sprouts that's when they taste the worst but if you shave them and then you roast them put a little balsamic vinegar on there and a little seasoning or something they're really good they're really good yeah they're good i, I buy the shake sometime when i'm pushed for time and i haven't had time to like do my vegetables i'll buy shaved uh, Brussels sprouts and then just stir that in together with some uh, diced cabbage the other thing diced green cabbage will taste like rice I was telling this guy he was like you know my problem is that I'm a diabetic and I really like beans and rice so what I was explaining to him is that you can still prepare your beans but then instead of rice get a green cabbage and dice it you can either put it on the greater side of the box grater or if you have a food processor you just dice it until it looks like confetti and then you can put the beans over the you can like uh, put the cabbage the diced cabbage in the microwave for about a minute 45 seconds and put the beans with it when you're eating it it'll taste just like rice in your mouth it'll taste just like rice and it's actually diced cabbage so mm -hmm. Like, should we not really so much eat brown rice? Well, the thing is, is that um, brown rice has more fiber, and the thing is, brown, but the thing is, brown rice is still a carb. Even so, but the thing is, you can just eat less of it. The other thing you can do, again, use the diced cabbage and mix 50-50, 50, 50, 50 or 50 or rice cauliflower and mix it 50-50 with the rice. Mm -hmm. Now you still have rice, but you have like less of it. So eating so, one piece of pizza versus the third. Right, exactly, exactly. So you still, you're still getting your rice, but you're adding vegetable with it. Yeah. So you're decreasing the rice and increasing the vegetable right. serving, but you're still enjoying the meal. So yeah, you can do. That's another thing. And they sell they sell the rice cauliflower in Sam's in the big bags. Like they're individual. Like it's like I think it's four or five bags in the pack, and you just steam it, and it's like really good. It's good. I bought one, mm -hmm. but I bought one last week, and I was gonna make it this weekend. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it smelled weird. Mm -hmm. But truth be told, I really don't know what cauliflower is supposed to smell like. Mm -hmm. So it might have been okay. Well, see, caul cauliflower it's and kind of an odd smell. I think. Yeah, <laughs> cauliflower and broccoli and cabbage—they're mm -hmm. all cruciferous vegetables, and they do have a sulfur compound. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they do have that kind of sulfury kind of smell. Yeah. So that's probably what you're smelling. Going, oh, oh, what yeah, is that? My husband were like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. No, but um, a lot. Let's get out the Uncle Ben's, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm but experimenting. Yeah. Mm. Not looking forward to using my sick leave just yet. Uh, I I heard that. I heard yeah. that. Yeah. Keep that in mind. I have a question. Yes. Uh huh. For the, which would be like the low glycemic fruits that you can eat? Okay, low glycemic fruits um are is like lemon, lime, um like grapes are high in sugar grapes are really high apples are okay apples are okay so um i'm sorry mm -hmm. what about green apples versus red apples mm -hmm. or green grapes versus red grapes well yeah they do taste even and not what i found out that is even though a food might taste tart that is still like i was surprised that limes have a lower glycemic index than lemons Lim and I thought, well, okay, lemons are sour and they taste bitter, but lemons actually have a higher sugar content than limes. Mm -hmm. So um, they have a, there's a um, chart that you can just Google that, uh, the, and it lists the vegetables, ranking them from the lowest glycemic all the way up. And like grapes is like an, is on the low, higher end because um, they're, they're high in sugar. Yeah. Just think about anything that can be made into a wine it probably has a lot of sugar so like potatoes you know like you use potatoes for vodka so it beets beets are made beets are beets also are high root vegetables are high in sugar so carrots beets uh carrots they're all high in sugar i know but you know but you know you can also eat do you eat the top of the beets the beet tops Oh, see, I always, I get my, I get my beets, I get, I usually get my beets from Walmart because they have the whole beet mm -hmm. and you can actually be, eat the leaves of the beet. Really? 
-hmm. So like, but you're, like yeah, yeah. And avocado actually is a fruit because you know, it has a seed in the middle. So that's another low glycemic fruit. And it, but we use it as a vegetable. Uh, tomatoes are low. That's actually a fruit. Anything with a seed is actually a fruit. So tomatoes are really a seed, but because it's not so sweet, we use it like a vegetable. Cucumbers is another one. We use it like a vegetable, but it's actually a fruit. And so, um, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, and avocado also has healthy fats also. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's avocado is good for you. I, I, what I do, I even have one, I have a, another video showing how to make whipped avocado where you scoop the avocado out and you t I take my immersion blender and I put lemon juice and some dry seasoning. And then I just um, just whip, uh, whip it with the immersion blender. And basically you can spread it on your bread, mm -hmm. like instead of Miracle Whip or mayonnaise, right. just use the whip, the whip the avocado. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I do that a lot. Cause I don't, I don't like. Stay longer than it does. But you know what? Too fast. No, but you know what I found that if I put the lemon juice on there. Chris, I have heard. Yeah, the lemon color. juice keeps it from turning brown. Mm -hmm. So I, I put like for one avocado, I'll put like a tape, two tablespoons of the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And that also makes it loose enough so I can blend it you know, in the, with the blender. And then it doesn't turn brown. And it, helps. And it helps it not turn brown, the lemon juice. You know how like when you cut apples and you sprinkle lemon juice to keep yeah, them from turning brown? The so this is the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because as soon as you cut it, forget mm -hmm. to eat it. I know. No, I know. Okay. I know. But it's, it's, it's good for you. And then, you know, you can, it makes a nice plant, too. If you put the toothpicks in the, in the it makes a nice plant, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just put little toothpicks around it and put it in like a cup in of water. In a cup of water. You just change the water every day. Yeah. In about a month, in about a month or so, okay. you'll see the, you'll see the, you put the pointed in, in the water. And then you, in, in about a month or so, you'll see the little plant coming out. Because I was about to throw, I said, this thing, it was cracking open. And I was like, this thing is rotten. It's about to throw. And I was about to throw it away. Then I looked and I saw the little plant inside. I said, oh, wait a minute. So I left it. And then about a week later, then it was growing out. Yeah. And now it's about this tall. It's on my patio. Big and tall. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, like, Peaches are kind of in the middle, apples are in the middle, but I know, and like your melons are also, they're, they're higher in sugar also, mm -hmm. your melons. But they are good, but you know, it's everything in moderation. Yeah. And you know, if you, and if you combine the, you can do a combined fruit salad with like melons and apple, that's, that's really good. Mm -hmm. That's good, I, I, you cut it all up. Berries, most of the time, berries have to be eaten organic. Anything with a thin skin should usually be eaten organic. But things like cabbage, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, they don't have to be eaten organic. The only of those vegetables that you have to eat organic is kale. Kale you have to eat organic. And did you know you can eat collard greens raw? They can, they, they taste, no, I didn't like collard greens either, but if you dice them up and put them in a salad, they're really good. And see, you could mix them with like uh, spinach leaves or something like that and make a really, really good salad. It's good. Mm -hmm. So may I ask, mm -hmm. why do berries have to be organic? Well, because, um, because their skin is thin, mm -hmm. and so they absorb pesticides, they can absorb the pesticides. Mm -hmm. But if you eat something like kiwi or something like that that has a thicker skin, then you don't have to worry, or like pineapple, you don't have to worry about that because the pesticides don't penetrate. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, an organization that puts out a list of foods every year that can be the produce that can be safely eaten that's not organic. They call it the, the dirty dozen and the clean something. Yeah, yeah. they have that on it every year and they put that on there. And I, I, there's, I, have, a, I have links to all this stuff oh, yeah. on, my, on my website. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have it on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, like tomatoes have to be organic, yeah. but uh, yeah, tomatoes, yeah, because of, because of the thin skin. So basically, the rule of thumb is if it's a thin skin, that probably has to be eaten organic. But if it has a thick outer coating, covering oranges and things, then it doesn't have to be organic. 
like and see because and see broccoli is like tight is because the way is the, the it doesn't absorb much of the pesticide so broccoli or cauliflower or cabbage they don't have to be organic but kale does have to be organic so when i make my 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 what i call my vegetable blend i i the only thing i buy organic is the kale Okay, well, I'd like to thank you for your attention and your participation. This was really good. Thank you. Thank you. I got some good tips. Mm -hmm.